Felicia Show, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. Are child beauty pageants healthy for children? I to be a, a, a teacher. Failure and success. If they cannot handle failure, they will not be able to handle the success. I want to be a modeler. And the kid is under a lot of pressure. They're just not strong enough to come and expose the bad things in pageants. Every mother thinks the child is the most beautiful child in the world. Oh, my babies come and stand right here. Welcome, welcome. Today we talk about kids in the limelight. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Child pageants. No discussion on this topic is complete without wondering what really happened to child beauty queen John Benet Ramsey. Let's see. John Benet Ramsey had a bright career ahead of her. At the age of six, she had already won a string of beauty pageants. Then, one night in 1997, she was found murdered in the basement of her home in the United States. Accusations flooded the media. Her parents, as well as other beauty pageant contestants, were implicated as the possible murderers. But the case was never solved, and the true identity of the young beauty queen's killers remain a mystery. Child pageants and models. Is it good or bad? We hear stories of pushy parents backstage who are desperate to have their children win. We hear of tearful contestants who can't face the pressure. And we also hear of lucky winners who make it. Let's meet some of our youngest contestants, my favorite kids, three to five year olds. Oh, I just love them. Come on in. Well, let's meet some of our youngest contestants, three to five years old. Stand up. There they are. Oh, you guys look so beautiful, you know that? Oh, you can stand, that's fine. You can do your little pose, that's okay. What's your name? Andy. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a doctor. A doctor? And what's your name? Almeri. Almeri, what do you want to do when you grow up? Yes. Oh. A yefro? Yeah. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. A yefro is all right. And you, sweetie, what's your name? Geneva. Geneva. And what do you want to do when you grow up, Geneva? I want to be a famous model. A famous model. <laughs> Which model it's, do you like? <laughs> it's Naomi Campbell. Like Naomi Campbell. OK. And you? Also a teacher. Oh, you want to be a teacher? Oh, I want to be a student. What's your name? Kim. Kim. OK, Kim. And your name? Chanel. Chanel. What do you want? A Yefro. A Yefro. Uh, we're going to get good teachers here. We need good teachers. And what's your name? Yasha Samuels. Yasha Samuels. And what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a, a, a teacher. A teacher. <laughs> All right. And you? Litabo. Litabo, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a modeler. A modeler. OK. Now you're going to have, ooh, help me up. <laughs> now, Litabo, you are going to model for, how are you going to model? Show me how you're going to model. Get me some music up there. All right. Now you can you do the same? Oh, do let's see, let's see. Let's see. Do you want to do the same? No, okay, that's fine. Who who wants to do this do that? You wanna do that? Okay, do it, let me see. Model. Oh, you go, go. Oh. Boy, these kids are something. These kids are something. Parents, do you want to talk to me about this? Let's talk about it. Who wants it real bad? The mothers or the children? 
Well, definitely, I feel it starts off with the children who might have a little friend that does modelling and that has been in a beauty pageant, and then they'll ask the mom, please, I'd like to go and also do modelling, because it's, it's like a show, it's like a concert that they in every time. But then eventually, when it gets to the heavy competitions, the mothers do definitely take over. Mothers who feel they should have been a beauty queen one day and somehow no, Felicia, did not I don't work. think it's that. I think it's because it is their genes. And they feel that if the child doesn't win, it's maybe a reflection on themselves. And that the child might look like the dad or might look like the mother. And then when the beauty, you know, they, is only in the eye of the beholder. And to your mother, every child, only her child is the most beautiful. Let, let's hear more discussions. That's true. Every mother thinks the child is the most beautiful child in the world, which is fine. But are we realistic? And if the child can do it, that's fine. If the child Absolutely. can do it, that's fine. Anyone with uh, uh, opposing views there? Um, some children are definitely not sporty and on the sports as tennis and netball and stuff. So, example, my daughter, she does not enjoy sports at all. Her only sport is modeling. Mm -hmm. That is Donna. She just does sports, uh, model modeling. as a sport. Okay. Do you really want to do pageants or does mommy want you to do it? Mommy wants what? Wait, wait. Oh, there's it. <laughs> what? Mommy wants us to do it. Mommy wants you to do it. Sometimes you don't want to do it. I want to. You want to, that's good. Where's mommy? Where's your mommy? Mommy, raise your hand. Okay, mommy, tell us about this little girl. Is she always just outgoing? Do you yes. really want her to do it? Yes, I do really want her to go. And she's not shy. Always when there's something on the TV, she will always say, Mommy, I want to have a look on that. She watches pageants the a lot. The pageants uh, uh. model, the competition. Okay. Well, we have a miss. How many titles do you have? Well, Felicia, I have quite a few, but um, I got married just a few months ago, so I'm out of the, the pageant. So he said, stop it. Yes. You got jealous, huh? <laughs> no, it's not that. When you're married, you can't enter pageants anymore. So, yeah, I've, I have quite a few titles. I've been Miss Pretoria Show and I've been Miss Radio Ripple and quite a few others as well. At what age did you start? Well, um, I started, I, I done, I've done one competition in, when I was done at eight, and then I only started when I finished school. So, so roughly how many titles? Well, I, I'd say about six or seven. That's good. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Well, who didn't model for me here? Who did not model? You did not model. Hit me some music there, Colleen. All right. You want to do it now? Do it. Are you going to do it now? All right. Oh. Well, give them a hand again. My babies. Well, after the break, we are joined by a former Little Miss South Africa who refused to return her crown. We find out why. Thank you, Mark. I love you, I love you, I love you. All in your heart. All in your heart. Oh. 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 I refuse to crown the, the girl of the, the year that um, my completed year because I didn't want to bestow my burdens upon another child. Are you angry about South Africa's child sex trade? Do you have any information on it? Were you involved in South Africa's child sex trade either as a trader or as a victim? We want to talk to you. Call us right now on 011-476-8411. That's 011-476-8411. Or email felicia at iafrica.com. Felicia, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. Remember the horrific story of Tom Adlington who butchered his children. I was sort of thinking, well, why did you kill me and leave my children alone? Family suicides on the increase. Started shooting at my eight years old, at my eight year old. <laughs> it still hurt. Family murders. I am HIV positive. I've got a child. I nearly killed them, even myself. The Felicia Show tackles this topic. We are talking about child pageants. We are going to be talking to three veteran contestants 
Miss Teen Universe, Miss Universe International, and Naledi Mukwena, who won Little Miss South Africa in 1999. She says her dream turned into a nightmare. Absolute hell, quote. Well, we'll find out why. But first, let's meet more beauty queen hopefuls, six to nine-year-olds. Come and join me. Oh, my babies, come and stand right here. Wow. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Wow. You guys are so beautiful. Take the mic and you'll pass it along. My name is Sherilyn Doris. I like Maya Krishnika Naika. And what's your name? Komoto. And who do you admire? My mother. Oh, why? Because I like her. Oh, bless her. <laughs> what is your name, sweetheart? My name is Donna Rita Sequeira. I admire my mom because she loves me and she gives me all my life. Oh, all her life. What did we do without mothers? My husband is here, then I'm seven years old. And who will you graag be? My mom. I'm just born to live with my mom. What's your name? Marie Shamila. I'm eight years old. And who do you admire, sweetheart? My mom. Your mom. Everybody admires mommy. Can you admire somebody else? And who else do you admire? My grandma. Oh, grandma. I like her. And what do you know? Monique. Monique, will you graag be? My mom. Okay. And what's your name? Anneli. And Anneli, what do you want to do when you grow up? To be a teacher, and I think I can't handle it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the best moment of the pageant for you? Anyone wants to tell me? Winning. Winning. My best that's moment was that's winning. what it's all about. Winning. Thank you. Thank you. What I'd like you to do now is go and join your parents. Before you do that, before you do that, let's just see a quick insert of Beauty Queen's Edit. Child pageants have become a big part of the entertainment scene. Nerves, tension and excitement, all part of child pageants. We hear of pushy parents who are desperate for their child to win. We hear of tearful contestants who can't face the pressure. Are these pageants for the children to have fun or the parents to realize a never achieved dream? Beauty pageants, beauty pageants. Oh my gosh, who wants it more, the mother or the daughter? But anyway, we're going to talk to Rosalie and Messi, Miss Junior South Africa 2000 and Miss Teen Universe International 2000. Rosalie, please join us. Rosalie N, please join us. Give a hand. You have some titles behind your name, huh? Titles behind your name, Sutia. And then we also have Jessica Paulson, Miss Universe International 2001. <laughs> Boy, did people say you're Annalyn Krill? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you love her? Do you She's admire her? Stunning. Isn't she? Uh -huh. And Naledi Mukwena, Little Miss South Africa 1999. Boy, <laughs> well, you have legs from here. <laughs> And I late. I've seen you before. Why do you like pageants? Um, I first enjoyed the pageants because my sister and brother used to model and they're much older than I am. And when I was three, I thought, oh, this looks so much fun. So I started entering. And every time I've gone to a competition, I've really enjoyed myself. And you always win? Not always, but I've won the things that I really want to. And even if I don't win, I enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do. You can't win everything. That's true, Jessica. I also do them for the fun. I've met so many amazing people doing pageants. I've learned so many new things, especially with the, the title I won. I, won p I met people from overseas that have got so, many, so much culture and so many other experiences to share with me. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot from them. And I've gained the a lot of stuff. The most famous person you met? Um, I met Jane Strauss in mm -hmm. South Africa 2000. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing woman. And I met Madiba. Oh, yeah, everybody meets Madiba. Amazing, yeah. 
And you're still waiting to meet the president. I've met him before, but it wasn't on a, a pageant basis. It mm. was on a personal... Um... I say that because right here in uh, this article that was written about you, you say that you have promised to meet the president and you even, you did not meet the president. Yes, I was promised a lot of things that didn't materialize, actually. Quite interesting. Strong allegations here in this article. It was in the Sunday Times. And you say um, it was absolute hell. Why do you say it was absolute hell? It was. Um, everything, the, the whole year, I, had, I went through a lot during that year. Firstly, the prizes that were promised in the entry forms weren't fulfilled. And secondly, um, we, I had to host the Little Miss... Um, universe competition and we had children from overseas coming to enter the competition and I had to host them the organizer was nowhere to be seen I had to take them around plan everything and I was 12 years old at the time you are the first winner of the international recognized pageant um, your father declared war on the organizers and charging racism I'm just quoting an article here do you um, think that's the reason why? And I mean, you say things like, I was treated like a domestic maid. Yes, the first time I got to Ellen's office, the first thing she told, she asked me to do was to make her tea. And I wasn't there to make her tea. We were there. Maybe she was just being a mother asking her daughter no, to make her tea. No, I was actually ordered around quite a few times. The fact that I had to host about 15 girls from overseas alone with no adult around. That's a form of child abuse as well, I see it. Did you hand, hand in the crown? You refused to hand back I, the crown? I refused to hand um, in the crown. I refused to crown the, the girl of the, the year, that um, my completed year, because I didn't want to bestow my burdens upon another child. I totally refused. I'm just going through the article here because obviously this is all I can talk about, and you obviously have the right to tell me more. Ellen says you are the most quote, non-cooperative and ungrateful winner. These ladies seem very grateful. There's nothing to be grateful for. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get my prizes. When I went to Los Angeles, I was, I was supposed to get my prize money. She didn't give me my prize money. But you did go to Los Angeles. Wasn't yes, it but that was another bad experience. There were good things attached to it, but 80% of it wasn't as good as mo uh, most people uh, make it out to be. But then it says somehow, somewhere there was a cat fight in, the, in Los Angeles. That was a bit exaggerated. Mm -hmm. What happened was that um, at, in Los Angeles, a girl um, asked me, uh, she asked for my outfit to use for a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And I gave it to her. The next day I went back and I asked for it because I needed to use it later on and she refused to give it to me. So what happened was that we went to the hotel room and we asked for it. And the lady threw it in my face. Mm. My mom was there. So we took the outfit and we left. Ellen came in and she, she blew up the whole situation. She called the cops, which was totally, I mean, uncalled for because everything was fine at the time. And, yeah, that was what happened with that incident. Any bad experiences? Now, be honest, uh, cattiness between the girls, if nothing else, she could not be the only person who finds bad things in the pageant. And I'm sure there were good things as well, Nadine. They, they were. What were the good ones? The good ones were meeting girls from overseas, from different countries, different cultures. You got to meet them, you made friends with them. Mm. Um, there wasn't much exposure, I don't think, with it. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't really say, for, to tell you the honest truth, I wouldn't say that my year was the best year mm -hmm. of, um, other children go through the same thing, but they're just not strong enough to come and expose the bad things in pageants mm -hmm. because they feel that, uh, they feel, I don't know, they feel bad about it. They feel that the organizers are going to do something bad. <laughs> Ellen couldn't visit us in studio, but we managed to get her on the phone and this is what she had to say. Ellen Rue, director of Beyond 2000, the organization that runs the Little Miss South Africa competition, says that they have never had complaints from any other competitor. Our competition is a big success in South Africa, she says. The kids enjoy it and it is a fine competition. We have on many occasions invited Naledi and her family to come and meet with us personally, but to date, they've never done so. Little boys who enter pageants, or is modeling only, we'll find that after the break. And what did you do to win, uh, to be a finalist rather than Mr. Africa? What did you do? 
mooi gedoe. Mooi geloop. For more information on the Felicia Show and our guests, visit www.feliciaonline.co.za. We're talking about young people in beauty pageants. Does it help boost their self-esteem or does it kill their self-esteem sometimes? Is there a trend towards men participating in events that were previously seen as women-only events? We're going to be talking to some boys after this who are also in pageants, but I'd like to continue this discussion. The good, the bad, the ugly. You've told me the good. I want to know the bad and the ugly. Young little girls are coming up right now. Warn them. What is the worst that you've experienced? And I think uh, if nothing else I can say about Naledi, she's been very candid. <laughs> Maybe it's because it was in the paper, Naledi. That's why you were candid. Um, I think it depends on which organiser you go to because I've been to the same organiser she went to and I also didn't have a good experience. But the lady that I went to America with, I went by myself mm -hmm. and she actually took care of me. She did my hair, she got my clothes before her own daughter mm -hmm. and I was, I was so happy with her. The ugly? Any ugly, Jessica? Well, there's definitely some bad aspects. Nothing's perfect. Um, I think there's a lot of bitchiness within the girls, starting from a young age, and also bitchiness outside of the pageant. People are very judgmental. Mm -hmm. If you enter a pageant, you suddenly think that you, you're so great. And I, mean, I went to an all-girls school. I didn't tell anyone I, w I won the title because I was not ashamed, but I just didn't want to get ridiculed at school because people had such an opinion of beauty pageants. Mm. And they think you only do it because you think you're the next Miss SA, but if you're a strong enough person not to let the bitchiness get to you, that's how you get through it. When you won the lady, mm -hmm. everybody accepted it? <coughs> yes. Everybody was excited for you? Yes, you have... The you mothers? Have, the, a lot of older people were, were happy for you, mm. were happy for me, actually. But you, you, you did get a couple of, as she said, bitchiness in the school, and, but, but the... I don't know, the acceptance was just, it was wonderful. Because in one of the articles, apparently, some of the mothers were not too happy. Oh, at the pageant. At the pageant. Mm -hmm. Yes, they weren't happy because um, I refused to wear the very high heel shoes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk in them, and I hated them at the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like party dresses as well. So my mom got me a very straight and simple dress, and I wore, they were elevated, but they weren't very high. And they, they were bitchy about the fact that I didn't spend 5,000 Rand on a dress. Or... Why didn't you wear your crown today? Why didn't you wear your sash? Because you didn't give it back? I, I don't like them at all. None of... I could wear sashes from previous competitions, which I enjoyed, but not this uh, specific one. But you still miss South Africa, little miss South Africa, because you refused to give back the title, huh? I wouldn't... I wouldn't say that. Um, it's over now. That was in 99, 2000. Mm. It's over and I've had my bad experiences. I've moved on and I'm not bitter at all. Advice to young people? Be careful which organizers you choose. I'm not saying don't enter beauty pageants. Just be careful. There are lots of organizers out there that are out to exploit children just to make money. And there's others that are there to... It's a good thing, as you... we were talking, and it's a... You're not suggesting that the last one you entered was just to make money, uh, exploited you. That's not what you're suggesting. Not, not really. I that just wanted to make yeah, clear yeah. that that's, what, that's not what you're saying. Yeah. Well, guess what? Boys are also entering pageants and modeling contests. Let's meet Dylan Haramse, who's six years old, who is a finalist in Mr. Africa. Give him a hand. <laughs> Dylan, come and join me here, baby. Oh, boy. How do you model? Show me how you model. How do you model? Can you model up there? Walk, walk, walk. What do you say? What do you say? Next me. Next me. Can I get a drink? Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Sit down. Sit down. All right. Dylan. All right. And we also have Caleb Lowe. He is 12 years old. And guess what? He's representing Gauteng in the national finals of Mr. Pre-Team <laughs> Africa. Have a seat here. How are you doing? Oh, oh, there we are. Have a seat. Huh? You like entering pageants? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Why? For the fun of it. Uh-huh. 
You meet a lot of girls after that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so how many girlfriends do you have now? No, I only got one. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm staying with her. Oh, yeah. And you? How many girlfriends? Are you a girlfriend? One. One? Oh. <laughs> And what did you do to win, uh, to be a finalist rather than Mr. Africa? What did you do? Mooi geloop. Mooi geloop. for me, let me see. Hoe je geloop? No, who can you win? You need to loop me. Huh? Final words to young people who want to enter? Advice would be just be yourself because your inner beauty does count and make sure you know what you're talking about. And because your intelligence does help you, because if you win an interview, you're more li than likely to win the competition because a lot of judges like to know that they're choosing a clever person mm -hmm. as well as someone that looks good. That's true. <laughs> Jessica? Um, I would just like to say that you need to be quite selective of the pageants that you do enter. Research them before you enter them. Just check it out, find out from people what the organisers are like, previous winners who've entered, just to get advice from them because that's how you learn from people who've done it before. And as I said, be yourself and don't change for anyone. If you're not comfortable doing something, don't do it. Just be the person that you are. And if they don't like it, you mustn't change for anyone. Edna Lady? Um, the, there's advice? Two warning. Yes, there's two uh, uh, advice I'd like to give to the parents I wouldn't, uh, I'd, I'd like to ask you not to force your children to do something that they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Because if you think that, that it's going to do good for your child, it's actually going to do more harm than it is going to do good. And um, you have to be careful as to which um, competitions you enter. As um, she said, you have to research them and you have to know what you're, putting, you're going to put your child through. And yeah, that's it. Okay. Thanks a million. Really appreciate it. And to you, young men, any advice you'd like to give young people who want to enter a pageant? Yeah. Be yourself and work hard at it. Okay. Well, Dylan, are we going to get anything out of you today? <laughs> anything you want to say? <laughs> Have beautiful eyes like that, huh? <laughs> huh? Oh, he's so cute. But thanks a million. After the break, promoters, judges and trainers tell us the real truth. Thanks again, young ladies. A lot of the children are pushed onto these pageants who do not really want to be there. Have you been conned into a fake marriage? Or do you know of anyone that has discovered they are married without being aware of it? Call us if you're a victim or if you have a fake marriage. Call us right now on 011-476-8411. That's 476-8411. Or email felicia at iafrica.com. Felicia, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. On the 22nd of August, we'll be recording two shows, Fake Marriages and Child Pornography and Sex Trading. If you would like to join us in studio, please call 011-476-8411 or email felicia at iafrica.com. But remember, tickets are limited, so please call soon. We have so many children here in studio that are coming to show or strut their stuff. So bear with us. We are looking at the reality behind child pageants. Do they boost a child's self-esteem or do they destroy their confidence after they lose? <laughs> Let's meet our next group of child beauty queens, ages 10 to 12. Here they are. Let's hear it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. They are. Wow, you guys are beautiful. Beautiful girls. Here's the mic. It's your chance. Tell me anything you want to tell me. I'm going to sit right here. Give me your name and anything you've always wanted to tell me quickly. My name is Siobhan. I'm 12 years old. I'm grade 7. My interests and hobbies are netball, swimming, modeling, and ballet. My name is Nicole. I like modeling because it teaches me to be confident about myself and you should never care what people think of you. First of all, I'd like to say, Felicia, thank you for inviting us. Now, that's the child who normally wins in a pageant. That's the child who wins because you start off by saying, I want to thank the judges. Oh, go ahead. 
And um, when, I, when, when I grow up, I'd like to be either a model or a singer. I like to be a model because it gives me confidence. Okay. And I'm um, uh, singing, I have a passion for singing and I love it. My name is Shomei. I do modeling because I like to dress up and I meet new friends. And I would love to become a veterinary when I grow up because I love animals. My name's Alexis Kutsia and I'm 11 years old. I like doing modeling because it gives me, a, it's a big opportunity and I, need, I meet new friends and I build my personality. I like to dress up and walk on the ramp to show people what I do. My name is Nikita and I like doing modeling because it's a very fun experience. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nikita and when I grow up I would want to be a teacher or a professional swimmer. My name is Shantia. When I grow up I want to be an air hostess because I, I like flying. My name is Shonis and I just want to thank my mom for putting me in mod modeling and I, when I grow up I love to be a doctor. Just want to thank my mom and my dad and Auntie Belinda and yes, Auntie I want to Felicia. Thank my mom and my dad for making sure that I'm here today. <laughs> <laughs> for putting me in modeling and taking the time to take to take care of me and take me to modeling. Thank you. I would like to say to all these contestants that are here, thank you for being here. And I would like to say thank you to my mom and dad for being here always for me in good and bad times. Even if I cry in modeling pageants, they say don't cry, grow up and be yourself. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful time because I'm certainly enjoying myself. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> I'm Sadie Road and I'm 11 years old. My motto in life is to walk tall, walk straight and look the world right in its eyes. That's Thank you. Cute, huh? My name is Shannon and I like modeling because it gives me confidence and it's exciting. All right, give him a hand. It. I think that's a lot of pressure for young people. Well, I think the one little girl said it very well when she said they love to dress up. I think if you put little girls in a room, they normally have their mommy's clothes and their high heels on, and they all want to be little princesses. And there's no better way to let your child feel like a princess than to be in a beauty pageant. Come on, guys, I want to hear the, the good, the bad, the ugly. We've um, been hearing the good. I tried an experiment at one of the shows I recently organised when during interval I called up every single mother that was in the audience and I made the mother's model. And you cannot believe the difference. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Well, they're not trained. But, but, they're children. Five years old, they've got to go up there and they must model in front of huge audiences. And I think that that's just unfair because children should but be children and they shouldn't you, have you have judged before yeah I, I get to judge a lot of these things because i'm a designer you know i see a lot of people beforehand um when they come to me for dresses um i judge some of them and i and i see them afterwards and i find that parents should equip their children um, with the skills to handle failure because it is as much part of the industry a success. If they cannot handle failure, they will not be able to handle the success and the pressure that comes with it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the children are pushed onto these pageants who do not really want to be there. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem I have with the industry. Um, a lot of the girls of seven years old are get to wear makeup, which is absolutely ridiculous. They go mm -hmm. on stage, we as judges sit there, and they have these recited um, speeches. I'm so and so that they don't listen to questions. We as judges know that a seven-year-old girl will have stage fright. Mm -hmm. And it's the most natural thing for them to stumble over their words. Well, go ahead, oh, interact. Yeah, yeah, just, um, go ahead. Let, let <laughs> me hear you something, please. Yeah, go ahead. Don't I've please. Just go ahead, talk. For a long time. Um, what happens is when uh, little ones, especially the three to 12-year-olds, when they enter into pageants, they have a lot of pressure from their parents. Backstage, she you'll find like that she the had parents... pressure. She said to enjoy it. What's her name again? Your Shay. Yeah. yeah. Your Shay is one in a million. No. The little no. The parents, no. No, absolutely. <laughs> No, you find that the parents no, no. put a lot of pressure on them and the kids has to concentrate on the charges. They has to concentrate on how they walk. 
they have to concentrate on their dresses because the dresses is so big they can hardly walk on it and the parents stand behind stage and says smile for the judges walk like this blow a kiss do the and don't forget because I will get you when you come off here and the kid mm -hmm. is under a lot yeah. of pressure and mm -hmm. I find I do organize patients and a lot of times parents are backstage and I will say to the parent please leave the kids alone Go and sit down. They are fine. They know what to do. The kids experience a lot of pressures from it's their... Like, it's like sports, really. Kids. I mean, I have yeah. seen parents yeah. in, in, in tennis. My kids play tennis where the father does threaten the child. Absolutely. So it is true. It's I've not... even had parents uh, threatening to smack the kid. And, uh, you know, when the child comes off from the stage, a parent pulling her around and saying, oh, what did you do? You shouldn't mm -hmm. have done that. And the poor child is devastated because it already is so much pressure walking out there in front of an audience, lights, cameras, judges, and then they're so worried about the parents. So well, you seem to be heated. I'm a grandmother. And I'm with it in every pageant that my grandchildren partakes in. But I do believe that it's the parents' uh, uh, judgment, the parents, they should know what their children should, can take or not. And they've got to say, I'm sorry, my child, you have gained, you have grown up to here. But I think, and channel the child into other uh, Where are the fathers? Let me hear some fathers. <laughs> Any men willing to talk here? Yeah? Let me talk to that father there. Give it to that father there. Oh, you look like you're looking good, huh? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Felicia. Felicia, you know, the pageants is the same as any other sport. Yes. You know, we all want to see our children uh, progress in sport and in everything that, they've do, that they do, but we must allow them the freedom. Mm -hmm. We must allow them to, to, to express themselves so that they could choose whatever they want to choose. You might find a little girl now being on the pageant, and three, four years later, she might be the South African swimming champion. That's but we right. must allow them to, to express to themselves mm -hmm. and to go forward. We mustn't force them. We mustn't put pressure on them because Thank it's you. our future. That's Those children are our future. That's right. Let's cuddle them and keep them it's going. nothing else than doing something positive. Yes. Yes. Nothing um, else than doing something positive. We're going to just uh, continue after the break. Yes. Really appreciate it. Parents, time and time again, bump their heads on the same yes. kind of organiser, mm -hmm. doing the same kind of thing to them. Remember the horrific story of Tom Adlington who butchered his children. I was sort of thinking, well, why did you kill me and leave my children alone? Family suicides on the increase. Started shooting at my eight years old, my eight year old son. Still hurt. Family murders. I am HIV positive. I've got a child. I nearly killed them, even myself. The Felicia Show tackles this topic. We've been talking to kids in beauty pageants and modeling. Kids in the limelight. We spoke to Cindy Nell, Miss South Africa 2002, on the phone. Cindy feels that girls shouldn't start modeling too young and would only allow her own children to start modeling after the age of 12. Cindy also cautions moms not to turn pageants into their own personal competitions. Too much competitiveness can break down self-esteem, so rather keep the environment fun and friendly. Well, I'm sure that inspires our next group or our last group of contestants here. Come on in, girls. All right, walk it, girls. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Simone Reeves, and when I grow up, I'd like to become a model, professional model, because I like it and it's fun. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Faiza Amod. I'm 12 years old, and my role model is my mom. She inspires me in everything I do, and I love her. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have a role model, but I would like to become a role model. Oh! And if I had to choose from a role model, I'd definitely choose Felicia. Oh, my God! That was a surprise! Thank you, sweetheart. Now, that was a surprise. She said she didn't have one. I love it. Can you say that again? I'm joking. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Jam Gomezilu. I am 12 years old. I like modeling because it gives me more confidence, and I meet new friends, and I enjoy it. Thank you. I'm Olivia Weddendahl, and I come from Pretoria. 
If I have time, I enjoy pottery and art, and my hobbies are modeling, drama, and Latin American dance. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carmen. Um, when I grow up, I want to become a chartered accountant or physiotherapist, and hopefully start my own modeling agency. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Raquel de Nascimento. I'm 13 years of age, and when, I, when I'm older, I'd like to become a photographic model. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bernice Ace, and I come from Pretoria. When I grow up, my dream is to become an international model. But if I don't succeed, then I would really like to be a vet because I'm an animal lover. Thank you. Thank you, my baby. Wow. Okay, let's hear about the speech training. Voice training is of utmost importance because people don't, the public, they don't just judge you by how you look, but it's also the way you sound. Mm -hmm. My colleague here, Lynn, we, we work together and with the voice training, which is the speaking part and the modeling, um, we develop the child as a whole. And oh. that's important. Okay, the girls can also talk to me. Any bad experiences? I'm honestly and truly going on to, into the bad experiences I because we read so about much the bad about it as well. Felicia. Uh -huh. um, my daughter entered the model of the universe 2002. Where's your daughter? Is she here with us? She's not here. Mm. She's 18 years old. Okay. Um, and uh, she won this competition. And on the entry form, it didn't say anything about parents having to pay for airfares, accommodation, or anything like that. After she's uh, won the title, I contacted the um, organizers to find out what's happening next. When is she going to Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey? Then they said to me, oh, but you have to pay. Are you, uh, do you have money to pay for hotel accommodation and flights and things like that? So I said, where did it mention on the entry form that we have to pay? And when uh, closer to the time, I actually contacted them and they said, oh, but you told us that you can't pay for this. So Someone was, was just saying when they, go in, when they go for international pageants, um, why, you why don't does, even see why anything. Why do we have to pay no for No tapes, that? nothing. Mm. No. Is that what you're saying <laughs> earlier? I did. I, I said that we haven't seen any of these children that have gone to America and from overseas ever viewed on TV or shown any of the videotape. And I, they have to pay their own expenses. They're not sponsored. And I don't see that these pageants are really getting out of hand as far as the money is concerned. Well, one child was quite excited. You know, uh, she said, I, get a, I got a huge crown and a sash. But that was the teens, I think, not these up to 12 years. <laughs> I want the money. Okay. Show me the if money. If you're promising Sorry. people overseas trip in a pageant, they have to actually, uh, uh, people that enter beauty pageants must find out exactly what's going on so they, that they know if they win this pageant whether they'll be able to That's benefit right. from it mm. or not because it doesn't help to enter something that you can't benefit from the prize. Felicia, I just want to say that I think that people don't really... They just enter a competition and they don't really make sure who's organizing it and, and, and what it's all about. I think I was very picky on what I entered. And I think that must be the main objective. Mm. You must be very picky on what you enter. Mm. You can't just enter any competition. Mm. You have to make absolutely sure absolutely. who's the organizers and what you're going to get out of this competition. Because we saw quite a variety of sessions exactly. here. Um, yeah. Parents should definitely be choosing in which pageants they take part. Mm -hmm. But an organizer earns respect. Uh, if you present a pageant mm. and you drop all these parents into something as you do not pay for these kids going overseas. Uh, you don't, do not hand over their prizes. You do not promise what you promised from the beginning. Then why support this, per this person mm -hmm. in organizing the pageant? But mm -hmm. parents do not learn. Mm -hmm. Parents, time and time again, bump their heads on the same yes. kind of organizer, mm -hmm. doing the same kind of thing to them. Mm -hmm. So why do they do it? And parents they still go should back to learn. Them. It all turns around, and, it, and eventually it still goes back to the parent. I'm also a parent of three modeling children mm. and I'm very choosy in what they take part in. Mm -hmm. If they do one pageant a year, that is it. And who's um, this young lady sitting next to this you? This is my daughter, Ilana Swat. She's a beautiful girl too. Thank She's a holder of 87 beauty titles already. So She's what? Been... <laughs> She's the holder of 87 beauty titles. Are you 87 years old? <laughs> no. How can you get so many <laughs> titles? She's been modeling since the age of five years old. She has also been a child pageant, um, a child partaker in pageants. Um, but I, as parents, always believe that my kids should 
uh, decide on their own. If this is the pageant I want to do, does mm. it look like fun? Mm. What kind of prizes do they have? Who is the mm. organizer? Is the main point in Excellent. my pageant book is the organizer. Okay. Thanks, folks. What are you saying? To that parents become addicted to the pageants. It's almost like gambling. Uh, they chase after two to three pageants a day often, and it doesn't matter then to them what the prizes are, who the organizers are. They probably chase after the title. So they really definitely become addicted to it. They cannot leave a pageant, whether it's Little Miss Bossoff or Miss Johannesburg. It doesn't matter to them. They just go. <laughs> Interesting. Thanks again, really appreciate your input. Remember that your child is only a child and should be given the opportunity to enjoy his or her childhood. There are still a lot of, I'm talking about many times, these poor kids will be dealing with stressful situations in their lives. In the same breath, we need to prepare our children for the competitive cutthroat world of business. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Here are three letters from the many we received on rare diseases. Vim wrote in to say, my youngest son was recently diagnosed with epilepsy. Your program is one of the most powerful in South Africa and a lot of people find some form of help or information from it. Brunel wrote in to say, my son has Joubert syndrome, which is also very rare. I know the feeling of not having support. Maybe we can create our own support group. Thanks for a wonderful program. Rosina wrote in to say, I'd like to compliment you on your love for the people on the show and the words of courage and wisdom that you gave them really touched me.